Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we have a dilemma. Okay, so today we've got a, uh, a dilemma. Uh, we're building a budget PC, and at the moment it's August 2018. So, what are your options at the very bottom of the market? Well, AMD side, we've got the Ryzen 2200G. Quad core processor, four threads, 3.5 gigahertz, 3.7 gigahertz turbo, overclockable, unlocked, will possibly get to 3.9. Built in graphics, Vega 8, strong graphics, possibly no need for a separate graphics card. If you're building a budget PC, this seems to be the obvious choice. And at around about £100 or near around $100, pretty good price for both a graphics card and a CPU. Now when you pair it with a motherboard, such as the B350, which you will need a B350 to take advantage of the overclocking features, um, you're going to be looking in the region of about £60 for a, a relatively good board. Uh, you obviously can spend more than that, but if you're looking at a budget, you're looking at £100 for the CPU, or £90 thereabouts, plus another £60 for the motherboard. So, for argument's sake, we'll say 160. Now, Intel have thrown a spanner into the mix with this, the Pentium Gold. So this is the G5400, a dual-core, four-thread CPU running at 3.7 gigahertz. So, very similar clock speeds to the Ryzen 2200G. Unfortunately, the built-in graphics is only the uh, 610, not the 630, which is preferable in the Coffee Lake, but 610. So it does have onboard graphics, but essentially they're rubbish. They're fine for creating emails, going on the internet, watching videos, and some extremely light gaming, very, very low resolution, very low texture sizes, uh, nowhere near as good as the Vega 8 in the Ryzen. But the offset, 50 pounds in the UK. So almost half the price of the 2200G. Now, to take into account, this processor is frequency locked, virtually no overclocking possible at all, apart from maybe a little bit of B clock, so maybe one or 2%, but nowhere near the overclocking ability of the Ryzen 2200G. So motherboard wise, you are limited, if you're on a budget, to the H310 chipset realistically. So. This board, the ASRock, this is the uh, H310M HDV-M.2, retails around about £50. So we're looking at a motherboard and processor combo, £100 against processor on its own, £100. So, so far, if you take into account the price of both of these bundles, £100 here for that, roughly £160 for that, that's a 60% increase in price but will we see a 60% increase of productivity and speed with this CPU? I would say it's very unlikely in looking at the benchmarks that I've done previously and looking at benchmarks from other YouTubers, which I'll uh, put some links to so you can check them out for yourself because I'm not gonna go to benchmarks in this video, but on an average, a little bit faster. Clock for clock, not a great deal in them. When you overclock this, it comes into a completely different league. So. Difficult to say if it's 60% better, but I would say maybe 15, 20% better as an average, but for a lot more money. So where does this platform make sense? Now this platform makes sense if you've already got a graphics card. If you've got a graphics card already, something from maybe AMD from a few years ago, maybe a 7870 or an, one of the R9 series, or even something a little bit newer like a uh, 1050 Ti, something along those lines. If you've already got a graphics card, but you're working on an older platform, then this as a budget upgrade is fantastic value for money. This will even run with a 1080 Ti. You probably wouldn't want to run it with a 1080 Ti, but it will run with that. The motherboard will allow it, and you've got full access to PCI Express 16 through the slots. Whereas this, you're limited to PCI Express times eight, but realistically, you're never gonna saturate that kind of bandwidth anyway. So, the dilemma is, 
do you build a system based on Ryzen or do you go Coffee Lake? Personally, I'm a fan of the AMD, I've been for a long time, most of my systems are AMD, but I'm really curious about this, which is why I've taken the money out of my own pocket to buy these bits. And I'm also gonna do a test between both setups. And I'm gonna be using a Western Digital Green M.2 drive, 240 gig, I think that is. Yep, 240 gigs. So looking like 40 pounds for one of those. And I'm also gonna pair it with this the Zotac GTX 1050 Ti, which will give both of them a, probably a good run for their money. Realistically, I think in budget systems, if you are building a budget gaming PC, the 1050 Ti is probably around the price point you're gonna be looking. If you're spending more than say 100 to 150 pounds on a graphics card, realistically, you're not gonna be looking at either of these platforms at the moment. So that's our dilemma. I don't know which one's going to be better. Uh, if you want to put some stuff in the comments section below, let me know which you think is going to be better. And uh, I'm going to build this up in an upcoming video. So stay subscribed, click on the chime icon. You'll be notified when there's a new video and you can see the build in action. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll be Mike. This is Mike's unboxing reviews and how to, and this has been my dilemma. Thanks for watching.